Hey guys, today we are creating the teacher from Little Nightmares 2. A scary marionette puppet with some pretty cool functions. Two weeks ago, I created the Hunter and I got so many requests after I published the video to create the teacher, to finally create the teacher. And I'm pretty sure many of you are very um, keen on the neck, how I would create it. I have no idea right now, but future Simon will take care of this. We have to create many things before the neck. The torso, for example. The whole mechanic for the marionette. And I'm using a very lightweight wood for this. I did the same technique on the hunter. And this means I also learned from my very first puppet of this kind. And I try to improve for the teacher. Ah. This is the scary marionette, the scary puppet I got from my parents. It's over a hundred years old and this is the technique which has been used for centuries now. And what I really admire um, on these scary old puppets, it's the natural movements. I know it takes another level to play them in a natural way but that they actually behave like a human person well in tiny it's fascinating for the torso for the hips we have this technique um, i tried to improve the weight distribution compared to the hunter i make the two slots a little bit deeper for the wire of the thighs Careful, because this wood is really, really easy to screw up with. <laughs> it's very good for modeling. It's balsa wood and it's so soft you can cut it with a knife. What the texture is quite important to get all these smooth movements, finally. And this is why I use a lot of sandpaper to remove the wooden fiber texture on the surface and to make it as even and as smooth as possible. Then within this hinge we have a tiny needle and we need another slot for this. And then we have two legs and two arms and need some wire for the lower part of the legs and the arms. And this will be also our structure, our skeleton, uh, if you will, for the clay part. Let's stick the needles in and see if the movement is working already. Now clipping away the end piece from the needle. We have needles, we have saw and sharp knives. It's the best playground for some really bad injuries. <laughs> yeah, as you know, I injured myself during the Hunter video. <laughs> but my finger is fine, again, thanks for asking. So it wasn't too bad. And I hope I get through this video without any serious injury. Look at that! We finished the skeleton of the teacher and we can switch over to clay. We won't be needing a lot of different colors. We have black, we have pink, we have a little bit of white and gray and beige, which I always call ochre. And we start with the lower parts of the legs. And as I read some information about the teacher in preparation, I now know that these shoes are called Black Mary Janes and we need some black clay for these, obviously. For the soles, a very thin layer of black and we remove a little bit of the grey clay again 
and just coat them, coat the feet in black layers of clay to get these black Mary Janes. Why do I know what names these shoes have? <clears throat> Let's put these onto the plate and focus on the arms. We need this pink for the flesh tone of the teacher, but as this pink looks too vivid, we make it a little bit more dead. I throw in a lot of grey, maybe a tiny bit of ochre, and we get this beautiful, deadly skin tone, and we can create her hands. I decided to go with the posture where she is holding the ruler, which makes sense. I thought about, uh, for a minute I thought about creating her with a piece of chalk in her hands, would have also been beautiful. Uh, but now with the ruler holding in her right hand, it gives her the authority, which she obviously is in the game. The fingernails with the new sculpting tool, which you can get on clayclaim.com now. So the tools are available and the hands are also available for the teacher. They are finished. Let's put these onto the plate as well and we're ready to go to the oven. Freshly baked body parts from the teacher and I also created this tiny piece from the neck. We will use it just for reference to get the size of the neck because I asked Kirsten here in the studio to help me with today's creation. She is insanely good at sewing and stitching and creating tiny clothings <laughs> for puppets. And so I asked her to help me out with a teacher. Hi Kirsten! Hi <laughs> And oh my god, how did she throw herself into this project? This is really insane. She developed her own cutting blueprints for this tiny teacher puppet, created some dummy pieces to get all the different clothings right. So what are you doing right now? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I think I'm sewing tiny, tiny things. Oh, it looks so beautiful. It's so tiny. I think I can go inside. <laughs> Look, I'm beautiful. <laughs> Looking fabulous. <laughs> yes, making, making very tiny stitches. That's what I'm doing. It's Tuesday evening and she will have another two days to finish the costume of the teacher while I will create the other parts. And say hi to Crystal. She joined our Clay Claim crew in January and look what she just animated. A beautiful subscribe and bell reminder for you. <laughs> Because honestly, too many of you are watching without being a subscriber. Plus you should honor what Crystal did for an amazing job on this tiny animation. Subscribe to not miss the next Little Nightmares 2 video. And I was looking forward to create these tiny eyeballs. It's a wooden tiny ball I am drawing on. The iris, the brown iris. And I try to copy this. The other eye should be, oops, the same. <laughs> and I have a very, very thin pen for tasks like this. Just careful. These are some good looking eyeballs. <laughs> It's quite helpful that both of these balls have a hole inside. We can stick them onto the wire and work on the mechanism for the moving eyeballs. I'm using transparent polish. I thought it would be an amazing idea to get them even a little bit more shiny and well disgusting in the end 
it didn't turn out pretty well because the transparent polish started dissolving the pens, the color from the pens. Um, and I ended up using a version of the eyeballs without using a transparent polish. The one I used was water-based, but next time I will try out a different polish. This is the face. I coated the eyes, well these are just dummy ball eyes, eyeball dummies. They have the same size, which is quite important, and after oven hardening... Oh no, let's remove them right now. Let's exchange the eyeballs with the ones we created. Meanwhile, they should be dry. Oh, it looks so spooky and pretty much alive. Beautiful eyes make such a difference. Now I'm working on the mouth part for the teacher. This will be the width of the nose with the two nose holes. All the tools which I am using right now are included in the clay claim um, tool set which you can get on clayclaim.com and we are ready to go into the oven. Freshly baked head of the teacher! Oh yeah! <laughs> and we are drilling another hole on the back side of the eyeballs. And I bring in these eyelets, these hooks, which I used before in the Hunter tutorial and drill them into the eyeballs to make them movable. Look at this effect! <gasps> the transparent polish is dissolving, this is unfortunate, and the movement was everything but smooth. And by removing some clay it hopefully gets a little bit smoother. Yeah, the eyes now really look horrible and I want to replace them with a new pair of eyes. We can just pop them out. Well, the whole creation was literally a nightmare because this movable functions, they were actually the nightmare. They didn't work right at the beginning. I had to improve step by step, make it all a little bit smoother. And with this black wire attached to the two hooks, we try to synchronize both eyeballs. And we are drawing another pair of eyes. I think I created a total of three or four pair of different eyeballs. And let's see how the synchronized eyes look like. It looks so beautiful! <gasps> yeah, but still not really smooth, but we will work on this later. For now I want to work on the lower jaw of our teacher. I created the head in different segments because of all the mechanic parts inside that I would be able to remove um, some parts to fix and to repair if needed. I'm carefully working on the lips. After oven hardening we will bring in some lipstick <laughs> and we can now work on the mouth itself. Let's remove a little bit more clay inside. We take all the space which we can get inside the head with the eyeballs and the mechanics for the mouth opening function and with some cherry red and with some black we will create the flesh tone inside her mouth which is almost black but I always like to bring in some colors like red for example which makes it more interesting. Okay, the time has come to create some incredible tiny teeth <laughs> and I will probably screw up on this and destroy them within the next five minutes but look at them once, how beautiful they look right now. <laughs> okay, this is fitting. 
And we can now decide how big the movable part should be. After oven hardening we will cut out this piece and make a joint out of this, make a hinge out of this. And to get the head a little bit more stable I am working on the walls. Probably I will cut this all open multiple times. But for now I wanted to create a stable structure of the head. Put this into the oven and we have some time to work on this beautiful ruler which I will cut out of this block of balsa wood. Another lesson which I learned from the hunter, um, the hunter creation, the shotgun was too heavy. It changed the whole posture, the body movement of him while walking because the shotgun would drag him down to the ground. And this time I will create a very lightweight ruler. I could have used clay instead, but this time I learned my lesson. Drawing these beautiful lines on the ruler, which she is using to hit some kids, <laughs> the bullies. I should add some, some blood on this ruler. has a red hook on one end and meanwhile the lower jar is oven hardened and we can start working on the mechanism on the opening mechanism carefully with a scalpel I try to remove this movable part and by removing another layer of clay I make sure that it gets a little bit smaller And the movement should be a little bit smoother as well. Sticking in the wire. And this is what it looks like in the end. But to get there we have to work on the center of gravity of this piece. Because the mouth should be closing independently. Otherwise the teacher will just look quite dumb with the mouth wide open all the time. <gasps> Hello pupils. <laughs> And we're adding another, another hook for the string to control the mouth later when everything is closed and assembled. To be really sure the note is holding forever, I put in some super glue as well, also for the eyes. And we can now glue the two head parts together. Let's see if all the mechanics are still working. Mouth, check. But the eyes, maybe remove a little bit of the skull. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> now it is working as well for the eyes. And for the backside of the head and the clothing part of the head, we will create a beautiful hair. <laughs> for the teacher, some black, gray and ochre. And I'm securing the strings by putting them into the head, putting some aluminum foil on top. That I don't accidentally mix clay with the strings. And we line the wake with some aluminum foil as well. It makes it way more easy to remove it from the head when it has the perfect shape. Okay, this is the base layer for the wig. And all we have to do is adding some beautiful details, adding some single hair. And I think you can already guess who this will be in the end. <laughs> the head is way too big compared to the body. It has the width of the whole torso, which is wrong when it comes to proportions. But I guess all the characters in Little Nightmares have their own proportions and proportional rules. Okay. And we carefully remove the wig from the head, put it onto the plate. And this will be the last clay part we are creating, the belt buckle. And some tiny buttons on the left side as well. And we are ready to go into the oven. 
while the hair are baking in the oven. Let's have a look what Kirsten created. Hi! Hi there! I'm so curious to see the, the final costume. I try. <laughs> oh, it looks so beautiful. Look at that, guys. Ah, no way. So what are you doing right now? Um, I'm starting with like the aging, uh, which is the last step, as you can hopefully see on this beautiful image. There's a lot of like distress and the edges are darker and it's just, it's, it looks very old and faded. And I'll try to recreate this because it looks way too clean at the moment. Going in there and being brave enough to destroy what you did. Together with the clothes and the hair, I start the whole assembly process and the final makeover to finish the teacher from Little Nightmares 2. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for the next Little Nightmares 2 video. And it won't be necessarily a marionette, a puppet, but I'm pretty sure you will like it because I'm somehow working on a simulator for the game, just on my desk. And we are drawing some very beautiful tine eyebrow lines and the lipstick. With this dark purple. And we have black outline around. And she looks so caring and nice. <laughs> that we have to drill a hole into her head. <laughs> it's necessary as well to have an outlet for all the strings. And this wire will be the main holding mechanism. This end will go into your hand while playing with the puppet. And with our hot glue gun we make sure we won't lose the wire and the head. Now we will bring everything together. Okay, mechanisms are still working again because it looked so beautiful. Ah. Let's now work on the body. We have the torso and the legs, which we will connect now with the tiny needles. Yeah, I almost made it through the video without any injuries, <laughs> but we're almost there. It's just the assembled process we are going through right now. Carefully with the needles. We don't need another injury. And this is the neck piece, which also Kirsten created for me. I asked her to create like a worm which would go through the straw. <laughs> and this is where we will hide the straw and where we will hide the mechanism making it a little bit bigger the entrance of the straw and with a lot of hot glue sauce we will bring this in Oh, I'm so curious if it all would, will work in the end. I mean, it's not only me, it's also Kirsten who worked a lot on this creation for all the clothes. And I don't want to screw this up. <laughs> the neck. Careful with this. I don't want to rip it apart. And we are closing the button-up shirt. extra part and this is the back side at first I thought about hiding the straw the entrance of the straw but now it looks even better it looks like a tail 
the gray and dirty skirt will go around and it will be fixed by this belt the belt buckle and we are almost there you remember the ruler we have this beautiful detail it's like her weapon <laughs> which we will glue into her hand as well her shirt is a bit loose and with some super glue you can even fix that it took a while until I figured out a technique on how to attach the neck to the head the main problem was that the neck was too big and would prevent the mouth mechanism to work. And with some super glue, we will make it a bit stiff. Stick the wire into the head and bend them to the side, attaching the head to the hair. And this is the playable part. The position for your hands Therefore, it should be easy to play the puppet, to make the eyes movable, to make the mouth movable. Let's now attach the strings to this wooden stick. This is the last working step. Attaching all the buttons to her button-up shirt. Guys, I guess. That's it. The teacher. And she's coming. I hope you enjoyed the video. Creating the teacher was literally a nightmare. I had to open the skull, the head multiple times, changing the technique, adding the magnets, for example, for the mouth effect. But I'm so proud of the final result. Thanks a lot, Kirsten, for helping me with the costume. Thanks a lot, Moritz, for your support, the technical support for the mouth. And Crystal, thank you so much for the beautiful animation which we included in this video. Guys, have an amazing weekend. Stay safe, stay creative. Bye. Okay, now we got to talk about this tail. <laughs> it's the teacher with the tail.